principal's welcome. Okay, well, before we begin, I would like to acknowledge that we are meeting on Gadigal land and acknowledge elders and Aboriginal people, both past, present and emerging. Well, welcome and thank you so much for joining us this afternoon. We've been really pleased about how our students have adapted to remote learning, and I really hope things have been travelling well for you at home. The theme today is about wellbeing, and Sonia Davis, our head teacher wellbeing, will provide an overview about how we support our students here at Inner Sydney during remote learning. But there's also another important point to raise, and that is it's also about your wellbeing. That's also really important to us. So I would like to remind all of you that it's still business as usual for us here at Inner Sydney, and we are still moving forward with our planning and organisation. And on a positive note, our Game Changers um, Challenge team, our 12 Story Thinkers, made it through to the virtual heat held in August, as well as our ICAS optional online assessments. You are well, more than welcome um, to make sure you enrol your child into those exams in mathematics, science, English and digital technologies. Now, please remember these are optional, but it's a great way to target students' higher order thinking skills and problem solving skills. Now, you're also going to receive an email tomorrow, and that's about our SLIC. As you would remember, in the last week of, of our term, last term, we moved very quickly into, on, into an online format. And so we'd really like to know your feedback about how that actually worked for you. So tomorrow morning, you'll receive an email about the survey. So please complete that survey by the end of the week. As Nigel mentioned, we would like you to we'd like to know what your ideas will be for the future for our um, sessions here during online learning. So please make sure you post those future topics into the chat. So on that note, I'll hand over to Sonia for her presentation about student wellbeing. Thanks, Sonia. Hi everyone, welcome. Um, I just like to reiterate what Robin has said. Um, please look after your wellbeing and the wellbeing of your family. Um, that's paramount to us. But on that note, we just wanted to talk about what we are doing to support students at Inner Sydney. Um, and then I'll, I will talk about what you can do to support your students. Uh, and then I'll talk about some links and some support, um, external support services outside of the school. Um, it is just important um, as we're moving through that um, you know what we're doing. And if you do have any questions, please feel free to email or call the school. And please note that you don't have to make any notes while we're talking. We will email um, this presentation out to all families and there'll be links in the newsletter. Um, so on that note, as I said, the first thing we're gonna talk about is our meet now. So every morning, um, so you would have heard your families inside the house, I'm sure, at 8.50 on the meet now. That's a chance for the students to connect with the lead mentors. Um, and they're doing a fantastic job. Um, I know Miss uh, Davies dog Stanley has made a bit of a, 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 a stole the show, I suppose. And then this morning we did Tuesday, 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 and that was fantastic. The students were playing lots of games. So it is a fantastic opportunity for students to connect. And it has been a, a hit with families that I've spoken to already. Um, we have got additional touchdown um, yeah, we have got additional touchdown sessions. Um, so that means we have touchdown every day, except Tuesdays. Um, and we have touchdown meet now at 11.50. So that means that all students have that other opportunity for connection. Um, and students come in with their um, mics off or their audio off. Um, and that's a great opportunity for students to connect with each other, but also connect with their lead mentor. Um, we have been focusing on mindfulness. So mindfulness is still happening on Mondays. We have also been focusing on kind of eye. So students have been telling us about ways that they're being kind to themselves, but also ways they're being kind to families. And we've had lots of stories about um, people making cups of tea for their families, people making cookies for their families um, and um, bonding with their siblings, which is great to hear. I hope that is the case and they're not telling us <laughs> um, stories. Um, as I said, wellbeing comes first. So if your children um, are saying this is too hard, please ask them to stop. Um, please ask them to take a break and come back to the learning when they can. They don't have to um, be dedicated if it's too stressful in terms of that session. Uh, so as I said, on Mondays in mindfulness, we're doing check-ins um, and mindfulness. Wednesdays is check-in and connection. 
first days is about sharing recipes and movies um, and what's happening. Some of my students have been playing music in the week now, which is fantastic. Um, and then most importantly, <clears throat> Fridays is for feedback. Um, so last week, the students did a feedback form um, and told us how they're going in lockdown. And it has been um, amazing feedback. The students are saying that they're coping really well. They're managing to work through their lessons, um, which is really encouraging to hear. Um, so what's happening in terms of check-ins? Uh, our lead mentors and myself have been busily calling um, families just to make sure the students are managing. Um, and on the whole, students have been um, going really well and the, the feedback has been very positive. Please note that we also have our school council still on site and we also have an additional school council that has started this term, Vanessa Cahill. Um, so they are available for support. So if you would like your, the council to reach out to um, your child, please email the school and we can um, set that up. Our learning support teacher has been working really hard behind the scenes to adjust some learning activities for students. Um, and that has also been really positive. Again, if you would like any support in regards to learning support, please don't hesitate to contact. And this is available to all students, not just students on learning support. So if your child is having any difficulties, please don't hesitate to contact. Um, in terms of the teaching and in terms of the lessons, teachers have been absolutely amazing in supporting our students. Uh, so there is a meet now at, at the start of every lesson. So what that means is students in teams, exactly the same as we do every morning, students can meet with their teachers and have a conversation about what is happening in the lesson. So the teachers will explain the lesson, students have the opportunity to ask questions, and again, this is a really good connection point. So the students feel like they're talking and they can get um, immediate feedback on any of their questions. We also have SLSOs in the lesson so they can help with additional questions. Those meet now are recorded. So if your child misses any learning session because they're, um, they're not coping or they were doing something else or they need to come back to the lesson, those meet now are recorded. So at any time a student can go into their um, team, they can play the meet now and they can see what the expectations for the lesson were. Um, another really good point that we've had great feedback on, um, we are doing must do. So if you have a look on your student's one note, if you ask them to show you, it will say must do, please do, or try this, and potentially even an extension. So that's just a guide for students so they don't feel overwhelmed. If they have too much to do, they can just do the must do. They don't have to move on to any work, but by all means, if they would like to, they can do all the work that's listed. Um, and teachers are putting up feedback at the end of each lesson so that students can say, yes, that was too hard. No, that was too easy. Can I please have some work? Um, so the, co the communication is constant throughout the lesson. It's not just at the start of the lesson, it's constantly throughout. So please encourage your students to post questions, if they, sorry, your children to post questions if they need to. Um, one thing I did want to touch on, which is a little bit different to uh, what's been happening, we are in the PDHB faculty, we are trialling open camera classes, and that's just so that we can give feedback on technique to students. Um, so if you see lots of little pictures of your students on the, if you're, when you're looking at children's um, OneNote or Teams, that's just because we're doing open classes so we can give feedback. If you do not want that to happen, your child can just leave their camera off, and that is completely understandable as well. Um, but as I did say, um, please focus on your child's well-being. Okay, so peer connections at this time is really important to the um, well-being of your child and the development at this stage of their development. Um, so please encourage them to do those meet hours um, and please encourage them to be social online. So whether it's FaceTiming their friends, um, whether it's um, you know playing games and being social, that is all great at this time because they really do need that social connection. What I have done is I've just come up with a little bit of a checklist that you can go through this with your um, children and just as a guide. So the most important thing is to stick to routine. And what I've done at the end of this PowerPoint is there's a little routine planner that the, that the students can fill out if they wish to. Um, they don't have to, obviously, but it's just a guide so that they can keep to that routine because routine is really important at this time. So I've just said there, you can read that for yourselves, but I've just tried to put down things like sleep and exercise and sunshine, which is really important making sure they're drinking well, they're eating well, they've got that social contact, they're doing some work when they can, the schoolwork when they can, but most importantly, that they're still doing the things that they love. 
So we love hearing stories about what they're cooking, um, what they're reading, what movies they're watching, things that they're creating. So please encourage them to keep that up as well. Uh, this is just something we put together um, from the wellbeing team. Just some little ideas again, so they can think of little different things that they can do each day. And our amazing Darrell in the front office put this together for us in terms of the graphics. It looks fantastic. Um, so as I said, this is just a little guide to if they need a break from their lessons, these are some extra activities that they can be doing. This is straight, um, straight from Reach out and beyond blue lots of the websites that i'm going to show you at the end of the powerpoint they have um points that you can look at in terms of if your students are struggling so i know that some, sometimes if you have a look up there some it says that you know is your child irritable um are they hard to get out of bed i know that's true for all teenagers but in, in just in terms of if you notice these signs and if it's increasingly um changing please don't hesitate to contact the GP um, or he, he, don't contact to contact the school in terms of the counsellor and we can um, guide you in the best direction for support. Again, as I mentioned, these are fantastic websites. I have looked through, there's a lot of information online, but I have spent some time on the weekend looking, looking for some actually worthwhile and really good resources. So these websites are particularly good for this time. The one that I've highlighted there in yellow, that is a fantastic resource. Um, as you would know, as parents to teenagers, teenagers don't particularly enjoy talking on the phone. They much prefer to message and text. So Lifeline has a text number where at any point in time, anyone, doesn't have to be a teenager, but anyone can text this number. And that is even if they're just feeling sad, if they're feeling lonely, anything, and they need to text, they will get an instant reply and support. So I just wanted to highlight that number because it is a really good number. Um, to encourage teenagers to have in their phone as just a point of contact. Uh, again, this is just straight from the, that information that I've got, and that is just uh, more information than that can, you have at your fingertips. That is the activity planner that I was talking about. So that might be something that you might want to put up on the fridge at home, or if your child has a pin board, just to keep that routine um, in order. And they do have their timetable to follow, which is just another good example of having routine. And then lastly, I've just put up some clips. So as I said, we will email these out to all families. So please don't feel that um, you're gonna miss out if you've gone too fast. All of this information will come in an email. All right, thank you, Sonia. So just very quickly now in terms of um, q and I know that that was very comprehensive for families at home in terms of how to best support wellbeing. However, it is, we always like to open up the chat, uh, sorry, the Q&A for any questions that our community might have. We also, as Nigel spoke about previously, we'll be talking about any suggested topics that you would like us to cover in future Zooms. So we do have this time every Tuesday earmarked just to touch base with our community because we feel that it's really important to have that community connection. So I'll just now wait if there are questions that people would like to put in the questions and answers. If you would also like to put any suggestions, you can put them either in the questions and answers or in the chat for things that you might want us to cover um, in future Zooms. So Chris, we talked about the lockdown challenge. Oh, I'll tell you, you like what, the legends of lockdown, I, I did see, and. It is something that's very exciting, and I know Mr. Court and Ms. Imer have been very excited with the staff to be able to deliver a lockdown challenge for all students. When we talk about that sense of connection and we talk about that camaraderie and that team aspect, obviously we have four incredibly strong teams that have battled throughout the year um, for success in terms of all the carnivals, but also in aspects within the school. And being in lockdown means no different because what has now happened is Mr. Court and Miss Ima have actually launched a Legends of Lockdown Challenge, where there is a daily challenge for staff and for students for mental health, for physical activity, but also for connection, where you can earn points for your team, Barty, Freeman, Thurston, all of the teams that you've got that you would like to um, that you would like to contribute to, and you can earn points. And there is a live leaderboard there. Um, I know Goods currently is leading at the moment, um, but that might change very quickly. Uh, the challenge was a push-up challenge for today, and that was spoken to in the touchdowns um, earlier today to students. And tomorrow, I don't jump know if the cat should come out of the bag, but yes, it is jump squats, and you'll see some teachers 
who also contribute to their, their teams. Miss Matthews and myself, we are impartial. So whatever we do gets divided up amongst the four teams. So I'll just invite any questions that do want to be put in, but we highly suggest that you get involved because it is that sense of connection with your peers and you're contributing to something bigger. You're contributing to your team. And all of those, sorry, all of those sporting activities are posted into the sport channel. So if your child is looking for um, activities to do to fill the time, they can look in their sport channel or their PE lessons for activities, suggestions. Yes, which answers that first question. Yeah. The second question is actually a really good one, and that's about attendance. So we've been working really hard following our departmental guidelines about how we capture the attendance. So our topic of conversation for our executive meeting this afternoon, Chris. Yes, so just thank you very much for that question. Please know that we are really closely monitoring how our students are engaging in work. But we are also working in partnership with our families at home. So obviously, we have had families reach out saying, look, I feel that I would like my child to be engaged a little bit more in work. How can I go about that? And we have personalised that support for that child. But what we have is that we are very fortunate with our one-to-one -one devices and the fact that we use Microsoft Teams. There is a, a function there that is called Insights, and that allows us to see for how long children were in the meet now with the teachers, how much work's been completed on OneNote. Teachers also have access to the OneNote booklets for all the students. So imagine almost like a virtual booklet that a teacher has where they take 30 booklets home. They can see and give feedback to that work. They, we also then have our data collected through Scout, which is a system that is used by the Department of Education in terms of engagement of students. So we do have those snapshots. And then we took it to the next level of this school where what we asked was teachers to be able to identify any students that they might have concerns about or that might need any further support to be uh, seen in wellbeing. And we have a live document which all teachers are contributing to um, analysing every session that students are engaged in. So what we will do is use that data not only to inform the nature of attendance, so that is if a child is working flexibly at home or if a child might, for example, be sick that day and unable to attend or we actually are un we don't know what that child is doing. We will be reaching out to those families to make sure that we have done everything that we can to support that child. But understand that children can work flexibly I did see another question just up there about the following of the timetable. At the school, Ms. Matthews, if you want to answer that, what do we suggest about following the timetable? We think it's important to follow the timetable if you can. We do know some of our students might be in different situations, whether it could be the access to um, technology. It might be tricky to do that to the letter. However, we do suggest for that normality of coming, because schools, we will return back to school. So we think it's important to maintain that routine as much as possible, but also with that, there is a bit of flexibility there as well. So our suggestion is you are learning, our students are learning at home, they are following their timetable to the best degree that they can. But we do understand there are going to be differences there. So for example, one of our students had to go to hospital. So therefore, this parent actually let us know about that so we're not worried about why that child is not engaging in learning at that point in time. Thank you Robin. Now I do notice that there is a question just about Maths Club but in general about extracurricular activities and you know I was really fortunate to see yesterday um, and I know that a lot of families were too the Japanese club running in an online uh, environment. At a, as a school we are currently looking at how it is the best way that we can facilitate these extracurricular activities but I must admit the most important thing is the core business at the moment. We need to get that right. So in the coming weeks, I will take on notice about the Maths Club, um, but I think it is really important to note that yes, while we are delivering some extracurricular activities, it is about our primary focus being our core business and ensuring that students are able to access the work so they do not miss that opportunity to grow their understanding um, with the work that is being delivered online. And all of the teachers have put extension activities into their team. So if, you know, your child would like to further in terms of maths, they might be doing some maths extension on a Monday afternoon if that's something they would like to do. Okay, now we get a question just about interactive group work. There has been some, and we had a really fantastic appeal last Thursday, Absolutely. didn't we, Ms Matthews, about nice. breakout rooms. So that was something that as a, as a uh, cohort, of staff, we actually explored um, the use of breakout spaces. And I know Japanese were using it really effectively for the year sevens. It is something that other staff are now starting to use too. I know Miss Witherden was talking about her use of 
she's resilient as a character strength to be able to set something up that she felt a little bit uncomfortable with at the time, but to great success for the students. In terms of interaction, it's really important to note that the structure of a lesson includes a meet now at the start of every lesson where teachers interact with students and students can ask questions in real time. There is also a post for the work that they need to do, but then that chat stays open, that meet now stays open so students can dip back into. Now, I know I've spoken to a few families about how to best use that. And it is really important, once the student has completed the work following that timetable, to then take the time to go back into the meet now and have a conversation with the teacher about what they learned, about a little bit of feedback. Have an opportunity to have that open discussion about how to better their work. The teacher can access the work and then that is allowing for that interaction. So I think that's really important. But again, we are working in partnership with our families. So it really is important to whatever capacity our families can do to encourage that. So this message that we're giving is please take the time to interact further if you would like to, um, especially just to get some feedback because it is about that growth mindset, isn't it? Absolutely. So thank you very much, everyone. It is really great. Um, if there are not any more questions, yep. we do have a couple that are popping up at the moment. Um, if I can just have a look at it. Absolutely. So thank you from Anonymous about the video off. We are trialling that. What you've got to understand is we are bound by, uh, and the question is just about the videos being off. Uh, and I know Miss Davies spoke a little bit about trialling the, the videos on, but it also is about us being governed by the Department of Education and their expectations given this remote learning. So we are trialling some video on for students. I know that students are also able to access during the touch points in the morning with their staff, with um, their peers, but it is also about making sure that we are safe in doing so. So we're trying to find that happy medium where we can do it. In PDHP lessons, we can actually justify the correction of technique and how important that is, that we are using that as a function. Once we've explored that a little bit more deeply, if we feel that it is a good environment and students are using it responsibly, we then might look at how to extend that further. But again, it is, given the circumstances, the best that we can do at the moment. And also we're trying to record lessons. So we're trying to record those meet now so that students can come back and look at the information and do the lesson at a later time. So if the cameras are on, we can't do those recordings. So we're just going to balance, you know, what's more, what's more important at this point in time for the students in terms of that flexibility. And I just, Miss Matthews, I know that we spoke about it, but just about the, the idea of group projects and those breakout spaces, if you want to just sort of talk a little bit more about those in terms of, you know, use of those breakout spaces. So we are really lucky in Microsoft Teams to be able to use these breakout spaces for students. So when there is an opportunity for group work, they are actually being broken up into different groups to then work on what it might be. It might be, for example, I used Japanese as the example before, where they're working, they're working on their interactions in that language. So there is that opportunity for students to be able to, to interact with each other. It is something that we do constantly look at in terms of how we can best um, facilitate that for students, but we've got to keep in mind that it does have to be that balance also. So we're just, I was just going to say, I'm oh, sorry, just, I just noticed that Nigel was perhaps going to answer that question as well. Nigel, is it possible to? So you would, Nigel, to... you would have typed in and answered that question for that anonymous there. Thank you very much. Yeah, so I've, I've added that. Um, I think um, Chris and Sonia did cover it a little bit, that, that department policy, um, but I also added some types um, answers to the, the breakout rooms and the interactive stuff. Many of the teachers, as has been alluded to by Robin and Chris, are really embracing all of this online stuff. Remember, it has just been a week of it. Um, and they're slowly, um, or, 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 and we've shared our practice last Thursday. So there's plenty of interactivity still to come. And I would expect that's, that will ramp up over the next um, few, few days. That's right, Nigel. Look, Chris, what I was just going to say at this stage, moving forward, if you have any other topics that you would like us to cover, please don't hesitate to email those through the school. What we're trying to do is keep our communication channels open. As soon as we have any new information, we certainly pass that on to you. So as you are probably seeing, we tend to email on a Monday, Wednesday and Friday and try and do a live presentation on a Tuesday. So as like you, we don't know how long um, this lockdown will continue, but what we'll do is, is to endeavour to refine our processes, keep on reaching out to you. And as I said before, it is business as usual. So if you have any topics, please don't hesitate to contact us, but otherwise there's no more questions. So from the team here, will we leave it there? 
Thank you so much. I really appreciate it. And thank you so much for the positive feedback. It's a bit hard to read that without my glasses, but I, I think that's a positive one. So yep. thank you so much. Thanks, everybody. Have a good day. Take care. Thank you.